Welcome to our ongoing series, a brief introduction to Experial's Global Ledger Taxonomy Framework, Experial Geo. Our session is going to be focusing today on finding and using the Experial Geo taxonomy. Um, amazingly, uh, many people are unsure of where Experial Geo can be found, the, the files, how to work with them, uh, and how to use them. So we wanted in the next 15 minutes or so to give you a little bit of uh, an idea on how to find and use the Experial Geo taxonomy. Uh, the, our topics will include both where the, the files can be found uh, at the Experial website at the GL files area. Uh, there you will find a couple of different sets of uh, GL taxonomy framework files, a uh, recommendation, uh, candidate rec, proposed rec, uh, propo well, uh, working drafts and things, and uh, we're going to go over some of those and let you know which might be the, the best for you at this time. Uh, we're going to talk about the directory structure that, that gets set, set up uh, based on those files. Uh, we're going to talk about palettes that bring together the right files at the right time. Talk about how you can either use the files by downloading them uh, from the website or by directly referencing them. And then just a little bit of uh, the taxonomies at work and show you some of uh, a sample file in some XML tooling. So let's begin. Uh, how do we find them? Well, you can go directly to www.expro.org slash GL files, or you can follow along the little map on the screen from the expro.org main page. Expro.org GL is a series of taxonomies. It's a taxonomy framework, and so uh, Expro.org files are found in the taxonomy section. When you click on taxonomies, you're going to see the uh, taxonomies open up. You're going to see how to create a taxonomy. You're going to see recognized taxonomies. And then you'll see off on its own the global ledger taxonomy. You can click into that, or if you hover over, it will open up one more time into the files. And into the working group notes, if you click on the files, that will bring you the expiral.org slash gl files. And what you'll see there is the Experial Geo files going back to the first recommendation. Experial Geo is the uh, recommended file. Now the, there is a, a approval process. There's an acknowledgment process for uh, many different taxonomies that are acknowledged and some are approved. Experial Geo is the only recommended set of uh, taxonomies from uh, Experial International. It stands off on its own. Uh, there's three uh, primary sets of taxonomies that you may be interested in at this time. Uh, that is the, the, the first three that you see, and I'm going to start with the third one. On April 17, 2007, our gold standard, the Experial GL framework recommendation. So this is the recommended uh, set of files from Experial International. It is the most current recommendation. And for general use, especially if you want to have uh, conformity with just about everybody, uh, this might be the, the set that you'd be interested in. Uh, as I've been doing some development of Experial Geo for the AICP audit data standard, uh, I've been basing those files on this recommendation as it is the recommendation. Now you can see that there's two other sets, and if your work involves uh, heavy work with integration between Experial Geo and aggregate data, such as Experial for financial reporting, uh, perhaps uh, an XML schema-based reporting standard like from the U.S. Internal Revenue Service, you may be uh, very interested in this public working draft, the Experial Global Ledger Framework with SRCD, Summary Reporting Contextual Data. And again, this is not a gold standard, it is a public working draft. Uh, this one is uh, potentially uh, subject to change between the status of public working draft to various candidates and proposed recommendations and recommendations. So excellent for doing integration, but be aware that because of the public working draft nature, it may be subject to change. Now, if foreign language labels are important to you, especially if Japanese labels, then this uh, proposed recommendation, the Experial Global 
ledger framework with Japanese labels may be important to you. Uh, this does have some changes in structure from the, the REC, uh, which helps permit uh, many sets of, of labels. So if foreign language labels are important to you, as a proposed recommendation, it is not subject to the same amount of change of a, as a public working draft. Uh, but just currently, this is what you'll be looking at. But please come back and check this site uh, on a regular basis. These statuses are subject to change. Now these files, when you extract them and keep the file structure, you're going to see a structure that looks similar to the one on the left-hand side. You're going to see a series of modules and other helpful uh, folders. You'll see something called PLT palette. Uh, for taxonomy developers, people who need to know what's going on, they're going to look at the COR or core module. That's the foundational one that everything's built on. Business, BUS is additional business facts that gets added to the core and you see from multi-currency. TAF is for the e-audit supplement of the, the tax audit file of the OECD. Uh, USK, that's uh, short for US and UK. Uh, we sometimes call them the saxonic fields, the things that are found in uh, larger ERP systems. And as I mentioned from the uh, one of the, the drafts, the SRCD, which is not illustrated there on the left-hand side. For most people, uh, they're going to be interested in two of these subdirectories, the PLT. Those are the various entry points, the Xperial Geo, and the IDS, which is illustrated here. You'll see that on the next slide, which is where instance documents go so that they can pick up all the right pieces. The other modules are slightly uh, more important for those who will be developing extension taxonomies. They'll need to know what those are, but most of you who are listening to the sound of my voice right now, the PLT and the IDS are the most important. I mentioned you'd see those here, and now you'll see them on the left-hand side. Uh, let's talk about the palettes. I would mentioned that there's the cores, the foundation, business, multi-currency, US-UK, tax, SRCD. Uh, these palettes, uh, like a painter palette that you can put different color paint on and then blend them together, the palettes bring together the modules in different combinations based on your information needs. I've highlighted on the left-hand side, bringing together core and business and multi-currency and the US-UK, uh, leaving out the tax and the SRCD. Uh, as you click on that, you can then see the, the files that make that up. And the most important one in all those subdirectories will look exactly the same, GL-PLT, dash, and then the date. That is the entry point the thing that blends together all the taxonomies. And so whether you're using a, an instance creation tool, uh, whether you're be using a, a mapping tool, like uh, we, we speak often about products like Altova MapForce, this file, the GLPLT, in the right palette uh, with all the combinations you need to represent your information will be your starting point for work. Now, uh, at the website that I showed you uh, at xbrill.org slash geofiles, amongst the things that you'll see is the HTML page that has the information about the global ledger framework. Uh, that has in it uh, the pointers to the, the different palettes. It has also the information on how to download the information to your own machine. So uh, on the left-hand side, you can see the place where it says zip files. If you take the zip file, if you load it onto your own machine, keep the folders, uh, you'll have something that looks very similar to the lines that we just saw. Uh, by loading things locally, you'll be able to work with GL uh, despite any problems with internet. Uh, our, our chair, unfortunately, as he's on our call today, uh, has found a place where he's got no internet. And therefore, if he was trying to work with Xperial GL and do it online, he wouldn't be able to have access to it. He wouldn't be able to, to design it as easily. He wouldn't be able to validate. Online and over on the right-hand side, you can see from that HTML document the online reference. Uh, as we, for example, just say, I'd like to go and just use the elements from the core. You can see that that first little reference, it looks just like I mentioned before, DL-PLT with the date.xsd. That's the entry point, in this case, in the palette that only brings together the core or foundational module. You can use the online reference to the link that's provided there. Uh, in this case, you will need to have a connection. 
uh, but it is fairly universal. You won't have to worry about how uh, XBRIL was loaded on someone's personal machine. Uh, for example, on my machine, I've got it in a, a subdirectory with XBRIL GL and GL version. Uh, you can do certain relative things, but uh, this gives you universal referencing instance documents that reference the online reference as long as they have that connection they'll be able to get everything that they need. So we found our files. We've loaded them perhaps onto our machine, keeping the subdirectories, or we found the place that we'd like to reference online. Uh, we can now work with our XBRIL GL. Uh, there are a series of sample files that come along with XBRIL GL when you do that download. Uh, as I mentioned, we're working on some sample files to go along with the audit data standard as well. Uh, on the screen in front of you, you can see uh, where I've got some of these files opened. And at the top, uh, perhaps a little bit technical, we've got some places where we point to our, our uh, entry point. So schema location being one of them, that is the traditional XML method of pointing to your starting point for your schema uh, with uh, the namespace and then the actual uh, pointer. Now this one is relative. I'm in the IDs directory. I move down one directory, uh, which brings me to my file for full structure. I move up to palette, up to the case, and find my schema. That schema ref is the XBRL way of referring to things, the starting point for the DTS discover, discovery, the discoverable taxonomy set. And again, you can see where in this case, I've got a relative, a local reference and so when I do things on my own drive and I don't want to worry about uh, about connectivity, uh, I work with things this way. Let me show you an alternative here. Here we are, and it's the same kind of file, but this time instead of the, the local reference, where I go from the IDs directory down one, back up through palette the case, in this case my schema location and my schema ref both reference that uh, reference that you saw from the HTML page. This is a link to XBRIL uh, GL uh, on the web instead. So this is the online reference, and again, uh, this has certain benefits as I prepare the files and actually make them available as, uh, as sample files. I would be using that because I don't know how people would be setting up their own machines in this way. I don't have to worry. I don't have to worry about them having XBRIL GL on their local machine. If they've uh, kept the, the, the directory structure this way, uh, I know the files will work. But w whether we're referencing it uh, locally, whether we're referencing it online, uh, now that we've got that link in there, I can do some schema-driven guidance. I'll know exactly uh, which files, which, which fields I, I can, depending on where I've got my entry point uh, into the XML file. It will know well, at this point these are the XML elements that uh, it makes sense for you to add at this time. Along with helping, uh, make sure that you know how to create files better. Uh, it also helps with the validation process, of course. And as I click into one of my enumerations, and uh, if you haven't had a chance to read the working group note uh, elaborating on enumerations, it speaks about how we use enumerations to help drive uh, shared data. Uh, because I'm hooked into my schema, uh, as I type, it gives me all the helps that I need to know what are appropriate entries for this. So uh, our purposefully brief session on finding and using the XBRIL GL taxonomy, we've taken you to xbrilorg slash geofiles. We've shown you the, the various file sets and why you might want to use the current recommendation, uh, one of the public working drafts or the, the current proposed recommendation, uh, depending on your needs. Uh, we've shown you how to load them on your, your machine, uh, the, how to navigate the directory structure, especially to find the pallets, which are our starting point to work with files. Talked a bit about whether you should uh, leverage downloadable, uh, the, the downloaded taxonomy, or make online references in your files. And then shown you how the taxonomy works uh, with a standard XML tool and of course with XBRIL tooling as well. We hope this session was helpful for you. If we have any if you have any questions, of course, we 
I encourage you to come to the website, xbrill.org slash geotaxonomy, and as you know now for the files, xbrill.org slash geofiles, come to our learning resources at geo.ifix.net, join our public ma mailing list at groups.yahoo.com slash group slash xbrill-geo-public, or send an email to our chair at xbrillgeo at xbrill.org. We hope this session has been helpful for you, and we look forward to talking to you in an upcoming Learning About Extra Real Geo Sessions. Thank you very much.